the United Nations launched the revised Pakistan Emergency Response Plan to further support uh, this vital effort. This new appeal extends the emergency relief to six months and includes the crucial element of early recovery uh, for the next 12 months. I call for your urgent uh, response. In addition, the United Nations country team is preparing an analysis on the impact of the floods on the Millennium Development Goals in consultation with the government and international financial institutions. Both the disaster needs assessment and the impact analysis will be completed by the end of October and tabled at the Pakistan Development Forum in November. We look forward to the government of Pakistan's vision and the long-term strategy for rehabilitation and development with clear priorities. On behalf of the people and the government of Pakistan, I wish to profoundly thank the Secretary General for convening this special meeting and for your kind participation. The unprecedented support of the international community is deeply appreciated by the people of Pakistan. After more than seven weeks, they still continue to ravage vast areas in the southern parts of the country. The damage is immense. To understand the enormity, multiply Hurricane Katrina by a hundred times, or imagine that an area larger than the United Kingdom or Italy was submerged under water. This disaster is indeed of biblical proportions. We are witnessing a huge humanitarian crisis turning into an economic and social catastrophe. The impact on our economy will be deep and long-term. The GDP growth will decline by 1.5% to 2%. Economic activity will dampen severely, and inflation will rise significantly. Whatever the devastation and misery, our resolve is to rebuild a better Pakistan. The government has mobilized all national resources and institutions to provide relief and assistance to the affected people. A grant of rupees 100,000 to each affected household has been announced. The first installment of rupees 20,000 is already being dispersed. Despite government's extraordinary efforts, the task of reconstruction and rebuilding is too huge for any country to undertake alone. Our efforts must be augmented by support from the international community. Let me quickly give you a snapshot of where do we stand with the relief. As of now, we are still 53% short if we go by the uh, numbers of the World Food Program. And if you look at the entire affected population of 20 million, we are 80% short on the food supplies. As far as water and sanitation is concerned, we are 80% short going by the numbers of the UN and 87% short in case we look at the caseload of 20 million people. For shelter, we are 82% short. We have just provided shelter to about 18% people. In health, we have a shortage of 75%. So this is the magnitude of the needs that Pakistan has today. I must mention here, that all the unmet needs are being met by the government of Pakistan, the provincial governments, the civilian society organizations, as well as the general population of Pakistan, which has come in a big way to help meet this deficit. This approach is, however, not sustainable and will have to be replaced by a more structured and more organized support system, which can take the caseload in coming months and years. There is clearly a great deal of work still ahead of the international community. Uh, the United States uh, has uh, provided approximately $345 million in governmental assistance, 
which is about double of where we were when we gathered here one month ago. We've also been uh, encouraged by the response from the private sector, particularly from concerned individuals who have contributed to the Pakistan Relief Fund, uh, which I launched here a month ago. And we are taking that money, approximately $2 million, that has been matched by Procter & Gamble uh, to spend it on water purification kits in uh, coordination with General Nadim and the, the D Disaster Management Authority. The widespread destruction is going to require so much more uh, from each of us. As we take these steps, we will follow Pakistan's lead. We look to the Pakistani government to help shape a strategy that reflects the needs of the Pakistani people. And we are encouraged um, by the uh, efforts that Pakistan itself is making to institute the economic and tax reforms that will help pave the way toward self-sufficiency. The international community will support Pakistan's efforts, yet we know it has to be a partnership 